वेलकम टुडे टॉपिक इट इज द गैलेक्टोज ओपेरॉन दैट इट इज कॉल्ड एज द गाल ओपेरॉन द ओपेरॉन विच इज फॉर द यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ द गैलेक्टोज the galactose it is a sugar and that sugar it is going to be used as an carbon and energy source but when when the another sugars they are not present that is they are absent at that time galactose it is used as an carbon and energy source by the cells okay the second use of the galactose by the bacterial cells it is for the cell wall synthesis for which purpose it is for the cell wall synthesis and the form which is used for the cell wall synthesis it is the udp galactose okay so the galactose it is required by the cells when when there is a no presence of the sugar and when though there is a presence of the sugar for the cell wall synthesis there is the there uh, there is the use of the galactose now here for this purpose okay as galactose it has a two purposes the galactose operon it is going to be expressed at the two levels one it is a high level and second one it is the low level okay so when when there is okay when there is no presence of the sugar at that time the galactose operon it has to be expressed at the higher level because demand for the enzymes it is going to be more when there is a no presence of the any another sugar into the medium okay so there has to be the expression at the higher level but when there is the presence of the another sugars and the galactose it is required by the cell for only for the cell wall synthesis at that time there there has to uh, there, uh, there is a no need of the high level of the expression the expression level that is the enzyme required for the galactose utilization they are going to be at a lower level so the galactose operon it is never switch on and switch off it is always like how high level of the expression and the low level of the expression okay so going towards the structure of the galactose operon when you look at the galactose operon now what you can see here it is the oe okay oe it is the operator second one it is oi oi it is also the operator so the galactose operon it has the two operators okay oe and oi when you look at the positions of these two operators you can see that okay you can see that the operators they are upstream of the promoter oe it is upstream of the promoter and oi it is in the structural gene okay oi it is present in the structural structural gene it is downstream of the promoter and present into the structural gene next here there are the two promoters p1 and p2 okay and when you look at the structural genes there are the structural genes four structural genes they are present gal e gal t gal k gal m okay so the gal e it encodes for the e polymerase gal t for the transferases gal k for the kinases and the gal m for the muta proteins okay next here it is the site okay here it is a site it is hbs hbs it is a site which is going to allow the binding of this hu okay it is a dna binding protein which is which is a type of an architectural protein into the uh, bacterial cells it is allowing the binding of the dna next there is a site here it is a as it is a activator binding site and here the activator it is a cyclic amp crp complex what is the activator which is the activator it is the cyclic amp crp complex and here there is the repressor okay and that repressor it is a gal r the repressor it is a gal r and that gal r it is going to bound at the yes the as it is a repressor it is going to bound at the operator and which are the two operators oe and oi these are the two operators to these operators who is going to bound the gal r okay so here okay so here as we know that 
just now we have learned that there is a high level of the expression and the low level of the expression. For that purpose, there are the two promoters, P1 and the P2. And when we look at, okay, when you look at the positions of these promoters, okay, they are how, okay, they are on the opposite sides of the DNA, okay, this it is, okay, this, it is a DNA, okay, and it is a double standard DNA, one of the promoter, it is on one side and the second on the second strand of the DNA, that is the two promoters, they are present opposite to each other and both of the promoters, okay, both of the promoters, they lack the minus 35 region, but both of them, it has the extended minus 10 region and the minus 10 region. Both of the promoters, they have what? Both of the promoters, P1 and P2, these two promoters, it has the minus 10 region and it has also what? It has also the extended minus 10 region. And what they lack? They lack the minus 35 region. And now when you look at these promoters, what you observe that they are the overlapping promoters. The sequences of the DNA, okay, sequences of the DNA, they are the overlapping one. Okay, so uh, here the P1, it is the promoter which is used when there is a need of the high level of the expression and the P2, it is used when there has to be the low level of the expression. These two promoters, okay, these two promoters, P1 and the P2 promoters, they are not active at the same time. Okay, so when the galactose, it is going to be used as an carbon source, energy source, at that time, the P1 promoter, it is an active one. Okay, and when there is the use of the galactose for the cell wall synthesis, okay, that is when the another sugars, they are present into the medium and there has to be low level of the expression, at that time, the P2 promoter, it is used. Okay, so for high level of the expression, P1 is active and at low level of the expression, the P2, it is active. Now, look at the reaction. Okay, so the galactose, it is in the medium. First, the galactose, it is going to be converted into the galactose 1-phosphate and the enzyme, it is a galactokinase. Okay, it is a kinase, so it is going to do the phosphorylation. Okay, phosphate, it is going to be gained from the ATP. Okay, so the galactose 1 phosphate, it is formed and that galactose 1 phosphate, now it is going to be converted into the UDP galactose in the presence of the enzyme uridyl transferases and the UDP, it is donated to the galactose by the UDP glucose. Okay, so the galactose 1 phosphate plus UDP glucose, it is going to give you the UDP galactose plus glucose 1-phosphate in the presence of the enzyme uridyl transferases. Okay, next year, the UDP galactose, it is going to be converted to the UDP glucose, okay, in the presence of the enzyme UDP galactose 4 epimerase. Okay, the enzyme, it is the epimerase enzyme. Okay, and then this UDP glucose, it is going to be converted into the glucose 1-phosphate with the help of the enzyme and that enzyme it is a mutarotase enzyme. Okay, in this way the galactose it is going to be entered into the glycolysis okay with the help of these four enzymes galactokinase, uridyl transferases, UDP galactose 4 epimerase and the mutarotase. Now here you can see that the galactose 1-phosphate plus the UDP glucose converted into the UDP galactose plus the glucose 1-phosphate in the presence of the uridyl transferases. This, it is the reversible reaction. And also, this epimerization reaction, it is also the reversible reaction. Okay, I have understood this. Okay, so here, when the galactose, it has to be used as an carbon and energy source. At that time, the galactose, it is going to be converted into the UDP glucose. And that UDP glucose, then it is going to be converted into the glucose 1-phosphate. And then this way, the galactose, it is going to enter into the glycolysis. But when, okay, but when there is, okay, when there is a use of the galactose, for the cell wall synthesis, at that time, what is required? The UDP galactose, it is required. 
So here the galactose, it is converted into the UDP galactose and also the UDP glucose with the help of the enzyme epimerase, it is also going to be converted into the UDP galactose. And in this way, the UDP galactose, it is going to be presented to the cell for the cell wall synthesis. Okay, understood this much? Now, can we go further? Okay. Now, repression of the P1 by the Gal R. Now, here, now here uh, in this, okay. The P1, it is the promoter use, which is used for the high level of the expression. Okay, but when there is enough amount of the sugar it is present into the medium at that time there is a no need of the high level of the expression means which promoter it has to be switched off the p1 it has to be switched off and the p2 it has to be switched on okay and here for that purpose the ends uh, the uh, the protein which is used here it is a gal r which is a repressor Okay, and this, this repressor protein, Gal R, we, it is the repressor protein and it is going to repress the P1 promoter. Now, here we can see that OE, it is the operator, OI, it is the operator. So, as Gal R, it is a repressor, it is going to bound with the operators, OE and the OI. And here you can see that there is the bending of the DNA. And for the bending of the DNA, there is a need of the HU protein. So this red one, these are the HU proteins and they are allowing the bending of the DNA. Now here, uh, see carefully here, you can see that this, it is the, okay, this Gal R, Gal R, it is a dimer. This is the Gal R, Gal R, it is a dimer. And these dimers, now they are going to bound with the operator and after bending these uh, dimers they are going to interact with each other and if you observe here the face on which this uh, these um, repressors repressor it is going to bound that face that uh, that face of the dna it is on the side of the p1 not at the p2 okay here okay you can see here okay this one okay this one it is okay this this one it is it is from what it is from the p1 okay so the so your repressors they are binding to the operators but the face of the dna it is where it is at the p1 so by binding at the face of the p1 the repressor it is going to repress the p1 that is the, it is not allowing the rna polymerases to get bound with the p1 okay but but at the same time, okay, at the same time, this gal R, it is allowing the, it is allowing the activation of the P2. Means what the gal R, it is functioning as a repressor for the P1 and it is going to function as an activator for the P2. Now here, this uh, gal R, which is a repressor, it is represses the P1. Okay, and this gal R, it is going to interact with the RNA polymerases and it is not allowing the RNA polymerases to do its function, that is the RNA polymerization from the P1 promoter and this it is called as the contact inhibition. Okay, the gal R, okay, gal R, which is a repressor, it is interacting with the RNA polymerases and it is inhibiting, it is inhibiting the RNA polymerases and the and and this it is called as the contact inhibition second it is what the gal r it is going to interact with the rna polymerases on the opposite phase of the r opposite phase of the dna now just here what we have seen okay it is a p1 it is a p2 they are on the opposite two strands okay means what the rna polymerases okay means what rna polymerases of the p1 it will bind at one phase of the DNA, okay, for when it is a P1, it is going to bound at the uh, at the face of the P1, and when it is a P2, it is going to bound at the face of the P2. Okay, so the so the RNA polymerases, okay, so the, here what I want to tell you that the RNA polymerases it is going to bound with the DNA. Okay, when it is a P1, it will be on the uh, uh, on the face of the P1. And when it is, uh, it is going to, it is allowing the P2, 
to get a transcribe uh, uh, when it is a p2 allowing the transcription it is going to be on the side of the p2 means the rna polymerase is it is going to bound on the both of the faces of the dna at the p1 as well as the p2 but when there is a binding of the gal r gal r when it is going to bound at the face of the p1 and it is when interacting with the RNA polymerases on the face of the P1. At that time, it is going to do the contact inhibition. At the same time, the GAL R, it is interacting with the RNA polymerases on the uh, on the face of the P2, and it is allowing activation of the RNA polymerases that it is a contact activation. In this way, the GAL R by contact inhibition it is not allowing the transcription from the p1 and gal r by interacting with the rna polymerases on the face of the p2 p2 and allowing the contact activation okay next here how the p1 now it is getting activated now uh, what we have seen just now that here uh, that the both of the promoters P1 and the P2 both of them they are lacking the minus 35 region means what the both of the promoters P1 and the P2 both of the promoters they are the weak promoters and they are requiring the activators just now what we have seen for the P2 the gal R it is going to work like as an activator so what is about the P1 the p1 as it is a weak promoter it should also have the activator and now that activator okay that activator it is a cyclic amp crp complex now at the as okay at the as at this site okay after oe here it is the as and at this as who is going to bound the activator it is going to bound and which is the activator cyclic amp crp complex okay it is going to bound at the as side now again you can see here okay what you can see this this it is a double standard dna okay p1 on the one face p2 on the another face so here the activator it is going to bound on the face where there is the p1 okay and here it is the rna polymerases okay and here the cyclic amp cyclic amp crp complex it is going to interact with the rna polymerases and it is allowing the formation of the open complex okay and then there will be the start of the transcription at the same time the cyclic amp crp complex it is also going to do the inhibition of the transcription from the p2 okay and it is not allowing the rna polymerases which has been bound to the p2 to get to form the open complex okay so here also the cyclic amp crp complex which is an activator it is it is going to do the activation of the transcription from the p1 by interacting with the rna polymerases to form the open complex and at the same time it is not allowing the formation of the open complex from the p2 side okay in this way okay in this way there is a regulation of the gal operon by the two proteins okay and that two proteins it is gal r and the cyclic amp crp complex so when there has to be the high level of the expression of the gal operon at that time cyclic amp crp complex this activator it is going to work and allowing the transcription from the p1 and that level of the transcription it will be a higher one okay and when there has to be the low level of the expression at that time who is going to work the gal r it is going to work it is allowing the transcription from the p2 promoter and it is going to inhibit the transcription from the p1 in this way okay in this way there is the regulation of the gal operon if you have liked my video please subscribe my channel and also share my videos with your friends and if you have any doubt if you have any comments you can write down into the comment box thank you